Turn with me in your Bible to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. And as Marvin was preaching and using up all my proof text, <laughs> I was wondering how in the world I'm going. I got plenty of others. I, I'll, I'm sure the Lord will give me plenty as I come along. And I'll, uh, if I quote the same one, I don't think it would be grievous to you. I think you'll, you'll need to hear it again. I'm thankful for that. Uh, but... Uh, Psalm 46, the title of my message is A Song of Holy Confidence. That hymn we just sang was wonderful, Lord, I believe, but oft I know my faith is cold and weak. My weakness strengthen and bestow the confidence I seek. By God's grace, I pray that this scripture would give you that confidence. You shouldn't expect that confidence to come from me. And you won't find that confidence in yourself. You can look to the Word of God and you can stand on it. You can put your soul on it. Because God, who is, He cannot lie and He cannot change. The Word's always been there. I'm going to tell you something, it's always been there. It's always been there for you. May God now take it and apply it. Let's read this together. We'll look at the, we'll read the first seven verses. You know, I'm never going to get to these seven verses, so that's just a, a hope, a vain hope I ever get through these verses. Psalm 46, chapter 46, verse 1, it says, a song uh, that says, God, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge song of holy confidence I know this is true of every believer in Jesus Christ everyone who has by the grace of God experienced the new birth and been given faith in Christ I know this your life is full of trouble your life is full of trouble you're surrounded by enemies both without and within constantly bombarded with sickness and trouble and difficulty. Your hearts are filled with sorrow and our providences are often dark. This is what religion, they paint a picture as though when a man is saved, everything gets better. No. No, I don't want to. I'm not a used car salesman. The moment you believe, your life is going to turn upside down. And all the things that once you once loved, you'll hate. And all the things that once loved you will hate you. Yes, sir. God's people experience trouble. But I have confidence in this. And you should too. That none of our foes, none of our troubles will overcome you. None of them will win. The scriptures are clear. You are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who love you. Through Christ Jesus. You're more than conquerors. None of these afflictions shall remove you from Christ. You are his sheep. He is your shepherd. None of you shall fall short of eternal life. He can rest on that. None of you shall fall short. None of us. We have this hope and confidence. Our Lord says this. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. 
And this is their confidence. You come to Christ this morning, this is your confidence. I will in no wise cast them out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And if you're confused as to what the will of the Father is, here it is, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, <laughs> but raise it up again at the last day. So then all of us who are believers in Christ now, this is our confidence that none of us shall be lost. None of us shall fail to enter into heaven. Not one. And I'm also confident of this, that all that Christ, that God has chosen and Christ died for, that have not yet come, they will come. Amen. Now look, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't preach. If I had just... Uh, preaching be preaching's hard enough. That'd be miserable. Not having any confidence anybody's going to come. I know this. They will come. They will come. God will use me or it may be in spite of me. They, they will come. They, all of them will come. None of them will be lost. All the Father gave Christ. He purposed to save all Christ saved. Will the Holy, Holy Spirit will come to them. And because Jesus Christ has fulfilled the will of the Father, none of them will be lost. All will believe. Therefore, God the Holy Spirit has given us this confidence. This confidence. And this is a psalm of confidence. That's what the Spirit has intended. This word for you, that you might have confidence. Not in yourself, but in God. In God. Now this psalm here has three, there are three things that uh, unfold very rapidly in the first verse that should instill confidence in every believer. Here it is. Number one, God is our refuge. Amen. There's the first thing that instills confidence in us. Second of all, God is our strength. And third, He is a very present help in trouble. And what does these three things do? It removes fear. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, the mountains be cast in the sea, though the waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake, we will not fear, but rather the streams of God, the streams which is Christ, make glad the city of God. So this is it. This is my confidence. So first off, this refuge. Believer, no matter what happens in this life, this is the whole subject of this psalm, no matter what happens to you in this life, the Lord's people are happy and secure. The Lord's people are secure. They're safe. They're safe. This is the doctrine of the whole psalm, the refuge. It's mentioned in verse 1, verse 7, and verse 11. The Lord is our refuge. Martin Luther wrote this hymn. He said, A safe stronghold, our God is still. A trusty shield and weapon. He'll keep us clear from all the ill that hath us now or taken. And where this, where this world with devils o'er and watching to devour us, we lay it not to heart so sore, they cannot overpower us. Amen. <laughs> no matter what happens. Because why? God is your refuge. God Himself, in whom the heavens cannot contain. He is our refuge. Let us, let the world trust in whomsoever they will. Let them make gods of silver and gold who cannot save, who have no strength or power, but we trust in Jehovah. He is our foundation, He is our refuge, and we rest our souls on Jesus Christ, our rock, our sure foundation. We abide in Him, in Christ. The psalmist said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. The Lord's my refuge. Secondly, the Lord's my strength. He's my strength. How is it that you now live? How is it now you, who believe in Christ, been born again? That was by His strength. By His power you were born again. And it's by His power you will continue to live. 
and move and have your being in Christ. By grace we have been born again and given faith and we have laid hold on him. We're like Noah have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know why Noah entered in that ark? He found grace. That's the only reason he entered that ark. That's the only reason he built the ark. God gave him grace. He found grace. And thirdly, God's my help. God's my constant help. Not only is he my help, but listen, he's my perpetual help. My constant help is God. He is an ever-present God. Now these are the three things I want us to go over. We're going to go over them in more detail. I want us to see this. It's very important because we're so easily thrown. We're so easily... That song that we just... That I would. I believe. I would trust. I would believe. I do believe. But man, I would believe. I do praise. Man, I would praise. I long to praise Him. I long to have this confidence. And so let's look at these three things. The Lord is my refuge. Surely in Christ, this is what it is. We who are in Christ have a refuge. And this is because He has endured the greatest affliction ever. He has endured the most fierce and powerful force in all the universe, the wrath of God. He has endured the justice of God as our representative, as our federal head, and we were in Him. The Scripture says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those, those who are where? In Christ Jesus. Amen. Who walk not after the Spirit, but after the flesh. What does that mean? That, those walk by faith. That's what it is to walk after the Spirit. It's to walk by faith. It's to walk by love and not having any confidence in the flesh. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through what? The flesh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin where? In His flesh. Amen. In His flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Lamb. He is the Lamb slain. The Lamb of God that bore away the sin of the world who by His one offering has forever satisfied, forever pleased God. And here is our confidence. This is it. He has done it. He has paid in full all that we owe to God. You feel that twinge of guilt in your conscience because of your sin? How can you have confidence God loves you today? Look inside your heart just for one minute and see if you find any confidence there. You won't find any confidence in you. Here's your confidence in your refuge. Amen. Your confidence is in Christ who has removed your sin from you. God took your sin, imputed it to His Son, made Him to be sin for you, who knew no sin that you might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Now that's confidence. That's something to be confident about. Him, our refuge, the blood of the Lamb was slain. We are like that firstborn in the land of Egypt that night. You remember God required a perfect sacrifice, a spotless lamb. He said, take the spotless lamb, slay the lamb, put the lamb on the doorpost and on the lentil. And then you take that firstborn and you put him where? in the house and you shut him up and when God came through that night I tell you the justice of God fell on every one of them in Egypt Amen. it fell on everybody yeah. but when he saw the blood what did he do he said I will pass over you why judgment had already been satisfied Amen. justice could not enter in it was already done. God cannot demand twice payment yeah, that's right. at my bleeding surety's hand and then again at mine. He cannot do it. Isn't that what he says in Isaiah? He said that the Lord hath of his hand the Lord hath received what? Double for all your sins. Double Amen. payment. That's doubly good. <laughs> his blood was sufficient. Sufficient. And as we... We in Christ, we were in Christ, 
And that blood was applied to our hearts by the Spirit of God. The justice of God says, satisfied. I'm satisfied with that one. I'm satisfied with that one. I'm satisfied with that one. All who are in Christ. I'm satisfied, God says. Amen. I require nothing of you. Why? I already took it at His hand. I already took it. Paid in full. Faith in Christ then is the evidence of this. How do I know that blood was applied to me? That's an important question. I know it was applied to the elect. Is that me? I know God is good to Israel, but as for me, how many times you said that? I don't know about me. I see how God be good to Marvin. I have a tough time. See how God could be good to me. What's the evidence? Here it is. Faith in Christ. Do you believe on the Son of God? Do you believe on the Son? Everyone that believes this is the evidence of the blood being applied is faith in Christ. And if you have faith in Christ, know this, you are in Christ. You are in Christ. And Christ is your refuge. Now how long is He your refuge? Marvin, how long? Eternity. He's always been my refuge. I didn't know it till he came to me. But when he came to me, I know it. And oftentimes I'm confused. When I'm confused, all I have to do is look at the refuge. Everything's clear. It's done. Second of all, God is your strength. God is your strength. We are safe in this refuge, yet in this life, in this body of flesh, we are often contending with the flesh. Matter of fact, the spirit lusteth against the flesh, and the flesh against the spirit. These three, these two things are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do what you would. What would the spirit do? What would the new man do? He would always serve God. He would always love God. He would always be righteous. Now what does your flesh do? He will always sin. He will always hate God. He will always... God didn't change your flesh. You know that? Right. That's right. God did absolutely nothing to your flesh. He gave you a new nature that now rules over your flesh, but He didn't do anything to the old man. Didn't do anything. Still just as vile and corrupt, spewing out hatred. We are often contending with this flesh, so what do you need? What do you need? You know you must continue in faith. What do you need? You need strength. You need strength. Paul said this. He said, Christ hath made peace by the blood of His cross. How do you know He made peace for you? If you continue. You must continue. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Now, I know this is true that all that Christ, God chose in sovereign election, all that Christ redeemed by the blood, by His blood, shall come to Him in faith, and none of them will be lost, but also know this, every one of them will persevere. Right. Amen. Not one of them will fail to believe in Christ all their life. All after He had come to them, they won't stop believing. And what Marvin said, he said, they shall, in, he that... Uh, Believeth he that endureth to the end. Who, who's going to be saved? He that endureth to the end. Right, amen. He that endureth to the end. There's so many who make a vain profession of faith, make some decision, get baptized, join the church, and they endure for a while. They grit their teeth, and man, they really try. They, they try to enjoy this. You know, they put on that front. They really want to enjoy it. They just can't. And then affliction comes. Trials comes. They lose their family. They lose their friends. They, and what do they do? Like a dog, they return to their vomit. 
Now faith, if faith is the evidence of our salvation, then what's the evidence of true faith? Endurance. If my faith is real, it'll endure. <laughs> That's just so. It will endure because He keeps those that He gives faith to. He keeps them in the faith. So then where does the strength come from to endure? It does not come from us. It does not come from our sincerity. It does not come from our devotion. It does not come from your determination. It comes from the strength of God. Therefore, this is my confidence I'll endure. The Lord who is my refuge is also my strength. Amen. He that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. There it is. God's my strength. God's my confidence and my strength. Now, the third thing here is He is my present help in trouble. Don't you know this, that you're a believer that God's always near you? Yeah. Yes, sir. He's so near you, the scripture says He's in you. Yeah, that's right. He's in you. He worketh in you both to will and do of His... Why are you here? Yeah. You suppose you got up and determined to come here? Well, who did that? God did. Yeah. He's in you. He is a very present help in trouble. He's in you. Go to Psalm 91. I want you to see this because this, is, this has got to be... A, this was a blessing to me. I'm sure it's a blessing to you. 91. Psalm 91. Since God is in you, and the Scripture tells us that He is our present help in trouble, Psalm 91 and verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Isn't that what happens when a man believes? Jesus said, uh, I abide, you abide in me and I abide in you. Yes, sir. You know, you can't, you can't get any closer than we are. Christ in you and Christ in me. Yeah. You can't get any closer. We're one. We're in union together. He's my head and I am His body. And then what's the result of our union? This is it. Verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee. Amen. Do you hear that? Now how much evil is going to befall you? Neither shall any plague come nigh thy Dwelling. This is a promise of God who is our help. No evil at all shall befall thee. No plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Where is thy dwelling? In Christ. That's where your dwelling is. No plague, no evil shall befall thee. Now this is misunderstood, misinterpreted, misused by the religious world to say that God wants you to be happy, healthy, wealthy in this world. That's not so. We know this and we understand that this does not mean that uh, we're not going to experience physical troubles or physical plagues or physical difficulties. What it does mean is this, that whatsoever happens to you who are in Christ is not evil. <laughs> Whatever it is. And so when we live in a hut or a palace, it's not evil. If you're sick, it's not evil. If you die, it's not evil. God says, I know my thoughts toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. That goes against every grain of your flesh. Your flesh says it's evil. It hurts. God says it's not evil. Look at Job. Look at him. All of that was for his good and not his evil. Nothing shall befall us that's evil. It is impossible for any ill to happen to God's people because God controls all things. Every calamity we face, every difficulty we face 
is ordained of God. Now listen, if God is my refuge and God is my strength, listen, then in every calamity and difficulty, God is also my help. How often do we spend our days going, trying to find help in the flesh? Usually God is the last place we turn. I think of Israel, how God had to pin them in. They never went to the Red Sea. <laughs> if God had not pinned them in, they'd never done it. Yeah, right. But it was for their good. Yeah. We see the dead bodies of their enemies washed up. That was good. It wasn't as good until they got over there. But it was good. Listen, God is here. And he's, He is only working all things for your good. Everything. This is to be your confidence. And notice this. There's uh, these things that he mentions in verse 46. He said, Therefore, because God is my refuge, because God is my strength, because God is ever present and is my constant help in troubles, that all things are for my good, he says this, Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, will not we fear. And he mentions these four things, though the earth be removed. What does that mean, will the earth be removed? These, these things kind of sound catastrophic like it's the end of the world. Remember, we're talking about a present hell. The context is present hell. This sounds like, you know, in, when, when the end of the world comes, we're not going to need any help. It's going to be done. That's right. We need help now. So this is talking about things that happen now. Though the earth be removed. What does this mean? Though your earthly supports and earthly helps and earthly foundations be removed. How many times God had to remove those earthly foundations you leaned on? Is He not still doing that? Still doing it in me. Constantly those things. Family and friends and all of those things. Why? So we lean on Him. We lean on Him. If those things be removed, if the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, what is this? Mountains are strong, visible things. They're things you would think would never be removed. I think of the pillars of the church. We just lost one. Brother Henry was a pillar of the church. Look, you can remove all the pillars of the church and the church will still stand. What are we? Just vessels. <laughs> just pillars. Just clay pots. And what if we were removed? Would that do anything to our salvation? No. No, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be cast, though the waters roar and are troubled. So the waters beat against your little vessel. Waters of trouble and difficulty and trials. They seem to, the bark just seems to overflow. It's like it's going to sink our ship. Oh no. Don't worry about that. God who sends the peace also sends the storm. He controls the sea, doesn't He? Though the mountains tremble and shake, what is this, your faith? How, how times our faith is so strong. When you get in conferences like this, it, it's strong. It, when you hear the gospel, it, it's encouraged. And you, you're so, you feel like you can be lifted up to heaven. It's wonderful. You see Christ so clearly. You see His salvation as something solid and strong. And the moment you step out, <laughs> where'd my faith go? Where'd my faith go? Oh, then what makes glad the city of God is this river. Streams make glad. What are the streams of this gospel of salvation make glad the city of God? There is a river. There is a river that flows from God above. There is a fountain that cleanses the soul from sin. Who's that fountain? It's Christ. It doesn't matter who's removed from us. It doesn't matter what our faith is, strong or weak. My salvation doesn't rest in my faith. It rests in His. Yeah. It rests in His. Why? He's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my help. When? In trouble. Which seems to be 
my whole life in trouble. Friends, may God Himself give you holy confidence. For we are of them that have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence. The more I grow in grace, the more I weak I see this flesh, how vile I see it. But the more I see Him too. Why do you think He gives us these troubles? So we run to Him. Run to Him. May God bless you.